All right, today we're going to be covering the basics of a Hopfield neural network model as described in the Chapter 5 homework. So first things first, we have to determine how many neurons there are in our network. If we take a look at the matrices supplied at the bottom, we see that there are eight activation values, which means that there are eight neurons. Then the second question is, how many synapses are there? To calculate this, we simply multiply the number of neurons in the network times itself, and then subtract the number of neurons. So that's 64 minus 8, which leaves us with 56 synapses, which are connections between neurons. Why do we subtract that 8? Because a neuron cannot connect back upon itself. So that takes part takes care of the first part of just basic terminology. So now we're actually going to simulate learning in a neural network model. So our first task is to create a weight matrix, M, of all the weights of the synaptic connections. It says in the homework to create a weight matrix where all the synapses start off as zeros, which would simply be an eight by eight matrix of just zeros, excluding the synaptic connections where the neurons connect backwards upon themselves. So as you can see, here's our matrix, which represents the state of the network before any learning has taken place. All the pre-synaptic neurons go on the top, all the post-synaptic neurons go on the side, and then the x's denote where a neuron would connect backwards upon itself, so one, one. So this is the initial state, and now we want to know what's the state of the network after it learns x1 down here. To do this, we create another matrix, oops, like the one that we had previously, just another 8x8. Eight eight. So now we want to calculate what m looks like after learning x1 and x2 using Hebbian learning, which is right here. Essentially, if we break this down, use a different color, this means the weight of the connections between neurons i and neurons j. And i and j are just stand-ins for any neuron, so it could be 1, 2 if we wanted. And this means that the strength of the weight between the two is simply a result of multiplying the activation state of neuron I times the activation state of neuron J on the other side. K denotes a time stamp or a time step, which we will not be needing in this particular exercise. So to calculate this matrix, we're going to take each one of the neurons in X1 and multiply it by the other one and so forth, ruling out all of the self-connections. So for example, if we wanted to calculate this spot right here, 1, 2, we would simply do this one two is equal to the activation state of one times the activation state of neuron two, which in this case is one and negative one, which equals negative one. So that would go here and here because the matrix is a mirror of itself across this diagonal. All right, so if we go down the row, so weight of one, three would simply be one 
times 1, which is 1. Same thing on the other side. And so on. Filling in both sides as a mirror. And if we go on and then we simply go like that until the entire matrix is filled. So this is what our network looks like after it has learned x1. So now we want to know the state of the network after learning x2. It's the same thing we just did with x1. where we simply multiply the activation states of each of the neurons with all the other neurons in the network. So if we take a look at X2, if we want to do the first connection right here, it would be weight 1 comma 2 equals the activation state of neuron 1 times the activation state neuron 2, which in this case is 1 times 1, which is 1. And if we want to do the second one right here, it would simply be 1, 3 equals activation of 1 times the activation of 3, which in this case is also 1 times 1, which is 1. And then you'd also fill out this matrix the same way that you just did with x1 over here. Okay, so now we have our network after it is learned x1 over here in this matrix and x2 over here in this matrix. So now to create the final weight matrix M, you simply add the two of these together because weight change is cumulative as shown by this sigma right here. So in order to do this, again, we just add up each of these two matrices with each value corresponding to the next one. So, for example, let's change the color to green. If we want to know what's in this first box right here, the final connection between 1 and 2, we simply add up the connection over an x1, negative 1, with the connection x2, which is 1. So, negative 1 plus 1 equals zero. So that's what we would put in both of these. Same goes for over here in 1, 3. So you'd simply look, so over an x1 it's a 1, and then over an x2 that's also a 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. So if we go down the whole row we have 1, 4, which would be negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. 1, 5, which would be 1, negative 1, 0. 1, 6, which would be negative 1, negative 1, so it's negative 2. 1, 7, which would be negative 1, 1, 0. And then 1, 8, which is negative 1, negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay, so that is our final weight matrix. And this is the strength of all the connections between all the different neurons. And that completes part B of the homework.